money with Stuart Tune Auctions, and I'm going to answer the burning question that's been on everyone's mind for the last two and a half years. Why I am no longer in the storage auction business. I've been meaning to do this for damn near a year. It's just so many things have happened. If you, as you enter this video and you see the slides, you see those books I wrote, but the last slide is the most important in terms of verifying something. I've had many people's like, oh, you know, you're not riding, you're just jumping on the storage auction, auction hunter train, and I want to say, you know, bitch, I was 15 months ahead of any of those shows. I started putting videos up and stuff since August 6, 2009. The shows did not come on until the fall of 2010. So, you know, I was ahead of the curve. But the thing is, anyone that wanted to take a little time and look, about me, and they would have seen that I've had writing references online since 2000. And also, the pack rat in me. This is like um, the folder, the first folder when I used to be stupid and write all this stuff out in longhand. I mean, I've got stuff in here for some 98. Uh, I want to give a shout out to my good buddy Tia. It was Tia Shabazz at that point, now she's Tia Ross who would let me into the writing group and submit my work and actually do crazy stuff. And this was like 1999, uh, the first victims of Passion and Friday. Now, the reason I put Passion and Friday at the beginning of the video is that was the original plan. I did not know the storage shocks and stuff would jump off to be what it is. It just kind of blew my mind. Because the real plan was write a little storage auction book, stick it up on the web, make a little money, go out and do the Passion of Friday thing, because Passion of Friday is more than just poetry. It's poetry, it's love letters, and it's going to be the erotica, then short stories. That was the progression. But the storage auction thing was like, hey, dude, that's not going to work. You need to pay attention to me. So I did. And that's the reason I'm no longer in the business, because, you know, I hit this the number one question. If it was so lucrative, why'd you stop? Number one, I did not stop. I was stopped. I was sick. I was diagnosed with chronic fatigue syndrome and pretty much was a vegetable for a few months. Couldn't do anything. Uh, my partner, who recently died, was diagnosed shortly thereafter with colon cancer. So neither one of us could do anything, so we just shut down the business. The beginning of the story. Uh, at one point, I was going to get back into it, but once again, the storage auction books and things just took off, and I've been presented with so many opportunities. One that if it pans out, I'll make more money for one project. Let me put that, let me just say that one project working maybe, you know, 100 hours than most people make in a year. Uh, writing the book has opened up so many opportunities and so many doors for me. It's freaking staggering. So, yeah, I'm giving up the storage business. I have decided I'm not getting back into it. And sure, I'll give up a few hundred thousand a year to potentially make millions. Yeah, I said it, to potentially make millions. That's called opportunity cost. Am I making millions now? No. Am I making my own salary? No. Am I happy as shit? Hell yes. I am doing what I want to do, and I'm making a living at it. How many people can say that? How many people can I say that? I've done it twice. I did it in the storage auction business. One of the reasons that my books are so effective is I didn't just do the storage auction business. I became the storage auction business. You know, and all these guys who come out, they don't read Inc. Magazine. They don't read the Harvard Business Review. They, they don't provide certain analytical process to, to units. You know, it's just buy and hope to make money. And that's one of the reasons I was able to come up so quickly and do so well. So that's the deal. I'm not getting back in. And also, this is my humble opinion. Based on what I learned and what I had to go through to get that information, there's no way in hell I'm just going to give that information to somebody for free. Nor, if my plans did not work out and I went back to the storage auction business, I wasn't going to give you all my best trade secrets. Anyone that tells you it's like, hey, I'm doing storage auctions, but there's enough for everybody, has never really done storage auctions full time. That's a part-time mindset because if you're doing it part-time and you have another source of income, you're not that pressed if you know you get bit in the ass by a secret that you let out to someone else. But if that's all you do day in, day out, there's no way in hell you're sharing that information, which makes me your best source. I'm out. 
you'll never be my competition. You'll never be my competition. And it was a big conflict because here in Georgia, there's a huge, huge storage auction population. So I write this book, then all of a sudden I got 10, 15, 20, whatever. How many people, how, what, what, whatever number of people who are using my shit to bet against me. What sense does that make? People, use your brain power and think. Think about it. And, you know, that's the thing. It was really hard because for a while I had a friend who would let me go through the units with him. <laughs> when you get the bug, man, it's just ridiculous. It's like, it's hard. There's some days that I just want to go out and buy a unit so I can just ramble through it. I mean, that is the beginning and end of it. You just get addicted to that stuff. So, I've been going through DTTs, the withdrawals. I'm in a better place. And that's the deal. And also, there's more books coming. I wrote a book last November during National Novel Writing Month that I hadn't even put out. It's done. And it needs to be edited and some other stuff, but it may come out. Soon it may come out three, four years from now because I have other stuff ahead. I am literally a year and a half behind. That's how much stuff I have to catch up on. Uh, the Hustler Mindset. That's going to become a book CD audio series. Um, the Porn is Always in the DVD Player. That is actually a book in the process right now. So let, let's count it. We had, you know, the first book you saw is Passion Friday Volume 2. It's done. I haven't put it out yet. <laughs> okay, well, I say I'm behind. I'm behind. Then you have Passion Friday 1. Then you have Making Money A to Z, the first one. Then Making Money A to Z, the second one. The Ultimate Garage Sale. And Pimping Craigslist for Fun and Profit. And I didn't put it up there because I couldn't find a little picture. Uh, you know, uh, the eBay book, which was so controversial, I didn't feel it was really good to put that out to people because you could get in trouble and I wasn't going to be responsible for getting people in trouble. So essentially, I have written seven books since the summer of July. Because I started this on this path, July 17th, I remember the day. I've written seven books, numerous blog posts, tons of poetry, and two years and some odd months. There are people who want to write a book and have been working on it for the last 20 freaking years. I can get it done. And I got to say, being in the storage auction business and developing that tenacity and stuff is what gave me the skill sets to actually see a product, a book, from start to finish. Because a lot of people can't finish a book. They can start, you know, they all, you know, they're really good. And then next thing you know, 20,000 words later, boom, they're out of it. I don't have that problem. I can make my ass right. It's proven by the fact that I have books. And, you know, I'll tell my little storage auction distractors out there. A good friend of mine this weekend pointed out some stuff. Number one, you're just a bunch of scared little jealous bitches. That's what you are. Because if you were in my position and you had done the things I did, you'd be saying the same thing. Understand, I left the storage auction business when it was good, before the recession. There are more storage units on the market right now than ever before. The, the lion's share of my storage auction career was when the economy was booming. Do you get that? The economy was booming. And I was out there. And these are the things that I look at and I laugh at. And, you know, and he was just like, man, you know, they're just jealous. And dude, you know, this this was really wild. He said, you, you really shocked me. Because he was one of the people who was like, you are freaking out of your mind to shut down that business too. Right. And he didn't know everything. But he was like, dude, I'm really proud of you. Because you, you really, because I thought you were a total dumbass. He just seriously. And you've actually inspired me to chase some of my dreams and do some of the things that I wanted to do. And this was a guy who told me to my face, you're, you know, you're a dumbass for shutting that business down and you will live to regret it. People were on my ass about that decision. Everyone's like, what are you going to do? What's your backup plan? I didn't have a backup plan. I didn't have no parachute. I just had faith, which is when I tell you that you can start a business, you can get in the storage auction business or something else, and you can actually make a go of it and be successful. I'm not bullshitting you because this is how I live my life. I've done it three times. And it's a matter of putting your head down, working hard, being expectant, 
and learning from your mistakes. And don't stop until you get it done. That's what it is. And, I, and that's, that's the stuff I teach people. Because many people want to do something. They want to do it bad. But it's like, oh, I'm too old. Oh, I don't have enough money. Oh, the time's not right. Oh, fuck, oh. If you're going to do it, you're going to do it. Because I learned this summer that life is very, very precious. It's very precious. We, this time we have is not promised to us. You know, you hoping for a better day. A better day may not come. It is on, incumbent upon you to actually make these things happen now. And what's really funny, I'm reading this book by Tim Burris, The 4-Hour Workweek. And it's like, I'm reading the book and it's like, this is what I'm doing. I'm, a lot of the stuff that he's recommending, I'm already doing it. About having the type of life that I want to have now. I always said I may never retire. To me, retirement is not the end goal. That means, you know, you've amassed a bunch of money and you're sitting on your ass. That doesn't sound like a lot of fun to me. What's a lot of fun to me is actually creating a life where you can do what you want to do right now. Because, you know, I'm a simple guy. I don't need a lot of stuff and I don't have to have all these accumulants of success. For me, waking up every day and having a choice that I'm going to do either X, Y, and Z of my own vo volition and there's no one behind me. There's no one saying you can't do that. There's no one that's saying, hey, you know, if I want to lay in bed and just tickle my navel, I can do it and no one can say shit to me. To me, that price of freedom uh, is worth it. It's worth it. The price I paid for it, it's worth it. So that's the deal. You know, from the top, I'm not getting into business again. Number two, the stuff is highly effective. And number three, I tell you the truth. Because I'll say it again. Anyone that's telling you that this business is easy is lying to you. Anyone that tells you that, hey, I'm just doing it part time and I'm, hey, I can share my best secrets with you, they have another source of income. There's no way if you had good stuff that was really working well that you're going to share it with someone else because you're pretty much cutting your own throat. Whereas I am doing something totally different. And also, there's going to be a lot more products in, in terms of uh, motivation and business that are coming down the pike because. Time and time again, I've heard from guys who's like, I am never going to do a storage auction book business, but I bought your book based on the information you give in your videos, and I found several things applicable in your storage auction book to my business, which is not storage auctions, which is a testament to how good my shit is. Yeah, I'm about to be arrogant. Yeah, I'm about to say that because I have the best storage auction book in the world. I do. And that's why I catch all this flack. And that's why there's all these little forums and stuff devoted to me. And there's like maybe 15 storage auction books, but no one else talks about those other books. You never hear anything about those other books. It's all about me. <laughs> and, you know, I'm kind of proud of that because that's, you know, being a disruptor. That's who I am. That's what I do. But seriously, OK, that's the deal. That's what's happening. And I created this video because so many new people are coming on and that's the first question. So now I can just copy, paste, bam, there's your answer. All right, this is Glendon. We're making money with storage unit auctions. And believe me, if you dare to have the courage to follow your dreams, you can make them happen. For real though.